Hey, Uno Loso, if you ain't no so. And I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bass. Loso, look. Sipping no good drinks, smoking on Zaza Big. All right, so we got Uno Loso off the porch with us today. Yes, sir. How you feeling today, bro? Ah, oh, man, I'm good. I can't complain. Yeah, man. Welcome yeah, to the man. Oh, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, man. What else you working on here at, uh, during this trip? Ah, uh, man, we just out here, you know, networking. We, uh, my little brother them did a uh, song with Cold Hard and Savage last night. So we just out here on a network tip. Okay. I here getting some business done. Yeah. Yeah. You come out here pretty often? Yeah, yeah. I, actually, we got a crib in Douglasville. Okay. Yeah, All so right. we around the corner. Hey, yeah. yeah. So how do you like working here compared to back at home in Dallas? Oh, uh, shit. At home, it's, it's more like just being at the house. You know what I'm saying? When I come here, it would be like going to work for real. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like it, it'd be a difference. At the house, we just at the studio every day, all day anyways. So when I come out here, it's like really going to work, though. Yeah. Yeah. Probably easier to focus out here, not yeah. too many distractions for like sure, it is sure. back home. Yeah. yeah. So how you feeling about this new year, man? I'm alive, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, that's how, how it matters to me, you know what I'm saying? I don't know that bag keep rolling. We stuff it down 2021, though. Hmm. They gonna really know what's up with the real Dallas this year, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't saying they don't know what's up with the real Dallas, but I'm showing the belly of that bitch, you know what I'm Yeah. For sure. So what's life like in Dallas these days? Ah, uh, man, it's lavish for me, you know what I'm saying? We kick back eating good, living good, you know what I'm saying? I don't be worried about what everybody else got going. Yeah. It's good for us. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What goes down in Oak Cliff? The cliff? Normal hood shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody got a neighborhood that's street, savage, raw. Same shit everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing different. It's a hood everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch? Uh, I jumped out of the porch. My teacher I moved to South Carolina, I was 13. I moved with my cousin, he was 20, 20 years old. I was 13, so I guess you could say by then, I ain't had nobody to look up, you know what I'm saying? No, nobody to answer to. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? No guardian in the crib, nigga do what he want to. I guess I jumped out of the porch then. Okay. Yeah. Did your cousin kind of guide you out there though? Kind of give you some ins and outs what to do? Oh, nah, that nigga was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I went to school smell like a pound of weed. I wasn't smoking or nothing though. I was playing football, playing basketball, doing the right shit, but I was going to school smell like a pound every day. Looking high, cause I'm in the bitch getting secondhand smoke before I go to school. All kind of shit. Hell nah, he wasn't no good role. <laughs> Probably the reason nigga out here right now, shit. Would you say the streets have changed much since when you were first coming up till today? Ah yeah, the streets changed. 90%. It's a whole new world out here, man. You know what I'm saying? They, from from the fashion to the, the way men carry themselves these days, like, you know, we come up in, in an era where a man gonna be a real man, you know, get your hands dirty, type shit, go outside. And these days, they so, they trying to feminize the man. Tight jeans, purses, and long hair. I got long hair and shit, but they trying to feminize the man now, you know what I'm saying? I come from an era real, you know what I'm saying? Hands up, guns down, we gonna fight, scratch harder, you ain't had nothing from the shoulders, you wasn't gonna survive in our era. You know what I'm saying? These days, these young niggas shooting that pistol before they ain't ask a question. Yeah. So yeah, it changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you consider yourself an OG at this point, since you've been around uh, yeah, so much? For sure. I mean, I, I, I'm an OG because I done made it to an age that most niggas don't make it to in my neighborhood, but I get respect from the young niggas as an OG, you know what I'm saying? So I I take that in like, salute, you know what I'm saying? I did enough, they, they respect what I did in the streets. Yeah. So they treat me like an OG anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you embraced that role, kind of, you know, teaching them what to do, what not to do? Yeah, like for cousin. sure, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm always showing the right path, well, I'm gonna try my best showing the right path. You know, you can leave them in the water, can't make them drink though. Yeah, y'all niggas crazy out here. Try my best though. Make sure they get some money. When you around me, you gonna get some money. Stay out of the way. Focus on what's important, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's my best best advice for y'all niggas. Get you some money, stay out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Real sick, man. 
What was one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn? Life lessons for me, I've been through so much shit, bro. Like, I done watched my partner kill my partner, like, all kind of shit. So, biggest life lessons for me, I can say, uh, be yourself, man. Stay true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't let the crowd influence you to do no crazy shit. Don't let these niggas trick you out the streets, man. Just be yourself. Stay solid. Yeah. Yeah. You said your, your partner killed his, his own partner? He didn't know him. I knew both of them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with one dude. We was in the same clique, same age. But another dude was a little older than me, but he used to come around to my cousin's house and get his haircut and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I look, kind of looked up to bro. And uh, I lost my best friend and my other partner on my 19th birthday. So we was having a party for one of my partners. And we 19 years old and that hoe drinking Hennessy straight. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the bitch off Hennessy. We got about five bottles. We done finished the bottles. Niggas start fighting, go outside, went to the other level. Somewhere she ain't went to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah she had me like that all the time. It's like, that's one situation. She, my other little partner just killed my little brother. January 2020 on some dumb shit. Hmm. Uh, yeah, she be crazy. Yeah. There you go. All right, what would you say is one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome in your life? The biggest obstacles of overcoming, uh, stop playing football and, and trans, transform into the, I would say, normal lifestyle, I would say. Cause I grew up playing football, basketball, everybody knew me for that, you know what I'm saying? So my whole life, my mind frame was NFL, NBA, NFL, NBA. And I went to college and shit didn't work out. When I came home, everybody was looking at me as a failure. You know how that is, so. I had to get that, get over that, kind of get over that hump. That kind of was a down point for me, but yeah, you know that shit. Right back to the street. What college did you go to? I went to Grambling University. Okay. Yeah, 07. I played quarterback. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you still got it today, or? I, yeah, I still got it with the arm, but shit, <laughs> knees and ankles so out there. I ain't doing no running. <laughs> and, uh, how would you describe that experience at Grambling? Though? It was pretty cool. Yeah. I actually uh, I signed to a whole new, co a whole different coaching staff that was there when I got there, so it was kind of different. Mm. I signed under Bruce Eugene, and uh, when I got there, they whole staff got fired. And they brought in a whole new team with coaches that didn't know me and I didn't know them, so it was kind of awkward there, you know what I'm saying? That's really one of the reasons I stopped playing ball. Yeah. yeah. How many years were you there? I was for one year. Okay. Yeah, it was just my freshman year. Yeah. Man. So were you making music before then? Yeah, yeah. I've been rapping since uh like fifteen. Okay. Yeah. I've been doing this since I was like fifteen. Oh, yeah. I ain't taken serious to like about four, five years ago though. Okay. Yeah, we just was making music. I was under uh I was with my partner Lil Tony two on four and he was signed under DeRoe music back in the gap when DeRoe had his run, so mm -hmm. we was doing that with them. Yeah. I with the road now. Okay. Yeah. So what made you take it serious four or five years ago? Uh, see, the city. Everybody just kept telling me, bro, you need to come on, quit playing with it. I had put out uh, my first movie I wrote and directed, Gone Side, Triangle Part One. When I put that out, it was like the first movie that somebody from Dallas had actually wrote, directed, shot in the city and put out. You know what I'm saying? So when I had got the recognition for that, everybody, was like, man, you need to dig back into the music. It just made me pick back up and start taking a little more serious. Yeah. Yeah. What was that movie about? Was it about your life or? Uh, it's about uh, it's about my little brother. Well, not my real little brother, but in the movie, he played my little brother. Uh, he came down from Dallas. I mean, from Houston to Dallas, and uh, I just introduced him to the wrong crowd. He ended up turning the city up. And yeah, it's a bad ass movie. It's on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So who'd you grow up listening to? Well, we grew up on that Boosie. Okay. On our side of town. Yeah, hey, uh, Boosie was a big influence on our side. And I grew up listening to 50 Cent a lot too. That was my favorite rapper all the time, 50. Yeah, hey, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, I grew up on that Boosie and that 50 hard. Why did they call you the ghetto god? Ghetto god, cause she, like I say, I done been through so much shit and, and then came out on top. And, and so many obstacles, like so many different obstacles, obstacles, so many different looks of life I done came out on top. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
everybody fuck with me. I just called me the ghetto guy. Yeah, I got you. What's your thoughts on the rap game right now? The rap game is, is, is really gravy right now. I, I think that it's starting to come back to the streets a little more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, not, I wouldn't say the streets like real rap, though. You feel what I'm saying? Like, not more of that old boogie music, trap music, all that shit. That shit cool, but it's coming back to more of the storytelling. You know what I'm saying? The, the real hip hop. Yeah. It's in a different form now, but if you really just break it down, that's really what it's getting back to. You know what I mean? And that's what I, that's what I do. I, I'm real reality rap. I spit on everything I live, everything I see. Yeah. Do you write your raps or do you freestyle and punch in? Both. I can okay. do both. I write sometimes. I go in and just go outside sometimes. Yeah. Talk to us about the music scene in Dallas right now. Ah, man, it's gravy right now in the D. Uh, you know, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of, I won't say negative publicity just this past couple, you know what I'm saying, a few months lately, but we've been having publicity. So we ain't never had that in, in the city, like, as far as focus on the industry. Focus on the music industry. Mm -hmm. Dallas ain't never been that way. Even when we had the boogie music back in the day, it was like a, a nice way, but it was only in the city. You know what I'm saying? Now that everybody outside the city, looking in the city, it's good for artists like me who've been doing it for a while. Got a buzz already going. Yep. Now I need to get that little international look. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like you said, it's been a long time coming for long Dallas, Long time coming man. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Because, you know, it's even a big market. Like, uh, rappers all over the country always hit Dallas yeah. multiple times a year. We for sure going to spend that money with them. You come <laughs> get you a bag in the D first, for sure. Yeah. But as far as in the city, they don't treat the artists, you know what I'm saying? The artists don't get the same love that outside artists get in the city. Yeah. You know, they say, see, they hated Jesus where he came from. He had to go, you know what I'm saying? So wherever you reside at or wherever you grew up at, they most not most likely not gonna give you the same love to everybody else. You know, I don't know why it's like that at all. Yeah. That's fucked up because I'd rather support somebody I grew up with, fuck, been rocking with for the longest, rather than get out here and fuck this nigga I just met. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's the way of the world now, 2020, 2021. <laughs> yeah. The way of the world. Yeah, and talk to us about the impact and influence Dallas has had on the culture and on the rap game too. Oh uh, yeah, we we really been had they they been culture vultures. They been coming to the D taking our swag and taking everything we say and changing and go take it for their own. But now we finally can stand and say, Yeah, you know where they came from now because y'all been watching and y'all been already peeping and seeing what we got going. So you know, Dallas come from the shags. I see everybody wearing shags now, you know. The slang, just everybody just been loving everything we got going. So now we can get to them from us yeah. and not y'all come adopt our lifestyle and take it around with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, even the dances. Yeah, right. We've been, I don't want to talk about that, but the Dougie <laughs> came from, the Dougie came from my neighborhood. You know yeah. what I mean? And they, they took, took it around with it. off with yeah, it, Yeah, yeah. So. Would, would you say most of the artists out there are supportive of each other? Oh yeah, yeah, we locked in for the most part, yeah. everybody really fuck with each other. And it's been that way, you know? We just ain't had the attention. So when nobody know it. Like even the, the, the button pressers in the city, the, the big time people in the city, they don't even see that the artists is, you know what I'm saying? We've been locked in, we've been, I, I don't get why, like the radio, let me say for instance, the radio station, they got this segment on Sunday nights where they play local artists, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. But why only Sunday night? I come to Atlanta, I hear all Atlanta music. Go to Houston, you hear all Houston music. You know what I'm saying? But that's just my thought on it. And, and Dallas is just crabbing a bucket mentality. Like, everybody want that bag right now. They never look for the long run, never look at longevity, what you can really do and who really can bring the industry to the city and uh, LA read the game. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, no heads like that in Dallas. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? They don't know that we've been rocking the artists. We we had the studio together every day, all day, 10, 12 hours straight. Like six, seven big time different artists in the city. You know what I'm saying? I even brought a few of them with me today, like Big Homie Keeb, <laughs> one of the youngest niggas in the game. You know what I'm saying? He came out here with me. You feel me? Like that's how we rock. Yeah. Little, little Mister, he out here with me. Like he one of the biggest producers in Dallas. Like you know what I'm saying? That's just how we rock. We we. Family oriented. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, talk to us about your relationship with uh, Trap Boy Freddie. I know you both from bro. the cliff. I've been knowing, I've been knowing Freddie forever, since high school, middle school day. Okay. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, yeah for real, for real. I'm Cliff America. Yeah, what's well, been like watching his career take off? I love it. Hey, I love seeing my people shine. That shit, like, because I know what bro been through, you know what I'm saying? I really know the, the other side of it. You know what I'm saying? So when I see him doing his thing like that, he don't do nothing but just give me butterfly. That shit like, you know what I'm saying? Give me the chills. I love seeing my nigga shine like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Salute. For sure, man. Um, what's the single that you're pushing right now? Uh, the Ghetto Guy was my last single. I, 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 we still pushing that though. You know what okay. I'm saying? The Ghetto Guy. I got a video out on it right now on YouTube. But I just dropped this new one called Zaza. I think we're going we gonna to go with that one for this. Next quarter of the year. Okay. For sure, for sure. Who produced Zaza? I don't even remember. Okay. I gotta play that beat. I wanna say Hit My 100 Hit My produced. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, uh, you working on a new project right now? Yeah, right now I'm, I'm working on uh, Born King 2. I just had another son, he just turned one. Okay. So I'm gonna drop, drop the mixtape on his birthday. Okay. Yeah. Um, who have you been working with on this project? Any features? Any producers? Oh, with the producers, I mean, we, we in house with it. I got a little Mister on there. You know, so I got 100 hit my eye. I got a uh, little Jew on the beat. Little Jew, that's, that's our bro too. You know what I'm saying? He got number one hits right mm -hmm. now. You know what I'm saying? We're making a stay and everywhere. So I got shit with Jew, Mister, 100, C Lot, uh, Keys, Keys on the track. Uh, Quinn with the keys, Danger Jim C's, uh, YL on 808s. Yeah, like, it's really just in house. Okay. Everybody I fuck with is, like I say, we, we together every day, all day. Like, yeah. Yeah. When do you think this project will be ready? Uh, it's ready now. Shit, we just working out the kinks in it, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Getting everything finalized. Yeah. And we ain't really got no date. I was going to go with January 30th. I think we're gonna push it back a little bit, get a little more promotion on it. Okay. Yeah. Is that like Nike? Is that video still dropping? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm go and put that out. I had, uh, I got it back a few weeks ago. It's just a little touch up I wanna do on it. I've been waiting on Omar to get back with me. Okay. Omar can still have friends, that's who shot. Yeah. I'm waiting on him to get back with me, but yeah, I'm gonna put it out. I'm gonna go and drop that. Okay. Featuring Lil Ronnie, that's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. How, long, how far back does that relationship go with Ronnie? I've been knowing Ronnie since he had the high top with the <laughs> blonde streak in that motherfucker. Yeah, okay. that's my boy. We go back, way back too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, talk to us about your label, Goonside. Goonside. Goonside, uh, it started as, as the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Where I'm from, it's, uh, we got three different sides. They make a triangle. We all came together. We grew up fighting and di disagreeing on everything, but we all went to the same schools, you know what I'm saying? So. As we grew up, we just all came together and, and named it Goonside. And off that, I piggybacked it and uh, piggybacked off that and made a label, Goonside, La Familia Entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Me and my brother Pacheco, the pilot, we, we co owners of it. You know what I'm saying? And then we just shot the movie. Just keep it going. You know what I'm saying? Keep the brand going, trying to build on Goonside, La Familia. And I just signed my first situation with. LBR Entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Uh, loyalty brings royalty. That's some, like I say, some people I've been knowing since I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Big diamonds on my neck, you feel me? 70,000. <laughs> Shout out to the label. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> but yeah, see, we coming hard this year, man. Hey, yeah, big family ties. Good show, man. Hey, Who yeah. are some of the artists you got on your label? Uh, it's uh, me, Warty Blood. We got uh, Rocky the Poet. We got Lil Gary, aka Baby Man. We got uh, Lil Brando. Uh, we got Young Cut. We got Baby Doug. I don't, I don't think I'm leaving nobody out. That's a full roster. We got right Shady there. Blood. <laughs> CEO Freak. I mean, Co CEO Freak, CEO Fresh. Yeah, we pretty deep. It's yeah. a big family. You know what I'm saying? What do you look for in an artist when you're about to add them to the roster? Uh, you got to be genuine, man. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you got to have some good music. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then my management, 
Design management, she's so picky, she ain't gonna just let anybody around. So <laughs> it really gotta go through her. So she, it's a whole process. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you mentioned having two kids, man. What has being a father taught you about life? Ah, man, it made me grow up quick. And it's beautiful, like, just to see some come at, come really came from my balls <laughs> growing up to be the man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Everything I feel like I was doing growing up, the same shit he doing. He just doing it on a smarter level, away from the neighborhood, you feel me? Like, I love it, bro. And then my little baby, he ain't even walking yet, but he everything I was when I was a baby, I already like, no crying, he don't do no crying, he chilling. <laughs> he don't cry when he wet or when he hungry, like, it's me all over again. Yeah. That shit crazy. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, yeah. Is your oldest, is he rapping too? Yeah, hell yeah. We just dropped his first uh, his first single on his birthday. Oh yeah? Turning five. We gonna shoot the video, put that motherfucker out too. I'm like Cardio LaFleur, man. Y'all be on the lookout for him. <laughs> for sure, he got swag out this world, I'm telling you. Yeah, I heard yeah, the song, yeah. yeah. This shit was going crazy. Oh yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, what else you working on? What else coming up, 2021? 2021, man, we coming hard. I'm talking about the best music you gonna ever expect from me. I got movies coming. I got my first comedy I wrote, Shipping and Handling. I'm on, I'm on that. Uh, I got my first love movie I ever wrote. I'm gonna shoot that at the end of the year. I'm working, working. Yeah. Coming hard, man. I ain't gonna lie, 2021 gotta be the year for me. For sure. For sure. All right, any shout outs before we wrap it up? Ah, oh, man, shout out to the whole city. You know what I'm saying? From Glendale, back to Highland Hill, from Highland Hill to the south to the north, man, you know. I feel like I'm representing Dallas, you know what I'm saying? I represent every other going side, but this is a Dallas thing when you see me, you feel me? The real Dallas, and know that when you see this face. B-Town, no cap. <laughs> no soul, no soul, look. Sipping no good drink, smoking on Zaza, big boy bankroll, looking yeah. like tie-dye 